Welcome. We are Northern Knights Gaming. Join us as we dive into tactics, strategies, and combinations that will help your army defeat all its enemies. Welcome to Tactical Timeout. Welcome to Tactical Timeout. I'm Northern Knight Anthony. I'm Northern Knight Justin. And today we'll be talking about five great strategies you could do with the Adeptus Custodians. First, we'll be covering the moving bunker. So, this tactic involves taking at least two Vexilla Praetors. The first one will be taking the Vexilla Magnifica. This gives a dense cover or ability for all core units and all character models within six inches. The second one will be taking a Vexilla Defensor. This gives a light cover or ability for core units and core models and character models within six inches. Your custodian guard squads will basically have a minus one to hit and a zero plus save which is why I would recommend you take minimum squads with maybe all precision shields, if not at least two shields and one spear. Anything that shoots at them will be basically suffering a minus one hit penalty and they'll have a zero plus save. You're gonna need AP minus one and AP minus two to even reach that two plus armor save threshold. You're gonna need eight dedicated anti-tank weapons like last cannons and meltas to even get them back to the four up invuln save. So basically you need to take dedicated anti-tank to kill infantry. Yes, if you wanna even get more disgusting, have your bikes, have your Dreadnought stand in that aura ability overlapping. They're gonna have a minus one to hit and at least a one plus save at the start of the game. It's gonna slow you down a little bit, but if you're taking bikes, they're gonna zoom up the field with, most likely you're gonna take Callistus. If you take Solar Watch, you're gonna be zooming up the field even faster because turn one, you're gonna take the two dice to roll for advancing. And then you can also do it a second turn and just zoom up the field, capping objectives, killing enemy models. That just sounds like it'd be amazing against anyone. Is, is there anything anyone could do against it even? I don't really think much. It's just gonna end up being a really big slog. If you have an enemy army that is just as tanky and just as annoying to deal with, for example, Death Guard, you're gonna have a game that everyone just collides in the middle. It's gonna be like two or three turns of them fighting each other until the game ends. Sounds like great fun. Not great for objectives, but just brutal fun. Objective wise, nobody's gonna move you off the table. And the best thing is you're all core, and I mean, you're all objective security then. So they're not mostly gonna be objective secured if they're Terminators, you are. If you love melee and you love big metal boxes, we have a great uh, crazy dreadnought charge out of Deep Strike. Out of Deep Strike, or if you want, you can put him on the field. He's just gonna be zooming up there. You wanna take a Solar Watch or a Dread Host Dreadnought, any type of work. Uh, I personally prefer the Galatus with the Sword and Board. Give him a CP and spend it on Eternal Penitent. This will give your Dreadnought plus one attack and allow him to reroll all charges in the game. If he already has that ability built in, for example, if you take Dreadhost, which allows you to reroll charges, you get plus one to the charge. Now you basically have a Dreadnought who's moving at plus one to its charge. It also works with Solar Watch because innately they get plus one to the advance and plus one to charge. So he's gonna be really fast. If you wanna do deep striking though, spend one CP to do the, from Golden Light they come. Dreadnought can drop in at any point in the map nine inches away from your opponent. Now you have a giant robot that is gonna need an eight to get into combat with a reroll, and that's more than enough, more than 50% chance to even get into combat. If you wanna get really nasty and prevent your opponent from even hurting this Dreadnought on the turn he drops in, spend an extra CP, uh, two CP if you're a Dreadhost to do Golden Light of the Moriates. After deep striking, whatever shoots at it is gonna suffer minus one hit penalty, and whatever he charges will be suffering no overwatching. So enjoy your Dreadnought, melee blundering, anything he focuses. Personally, I would use it into a big squad just to watch it get removed all at once. Oh, with the Galtus Dreadnought, for sure that's gonna happen. You get D3 extra attacks when you fight with the Galtus Dreadnought. And anything that strikes him in melee combat will be suffering a minus one to hit. That Dreadnought in melee combat, I bet even against the biggest, largest of enemies, will have a hard time even getting a single wound on him. All right, I know you like Silver Watch. Tell me something about them. I like taking the Blade Champion. He's really nice in the Custodes Codex, especially for Solar Watch. Solar Watch gives him an innate ability to have plus one advance and plus one charge, which is an amazing thing for an army that's based around melee combat. I give him the Warlord trait Sally Forth. So whenever it's the charge phase, 
one unit that has advanced this turn is eligible to charge. So imagine taking the Blade Champion. He advanced almost 10 inches maybe on average. You now can give him the ability to charge again. And he also gets plus one of the charge. He's going to be zooming up the field very fast ahead of everyone else. The best thing with the Blade Champion is whenever he's in combat with something else, anything else that wants to charge into that combat, whether it's core or not core, will also get an additional plus one to charge. So everything in the Codex for Solo Watch will get plus two char to charge if the Blade Champion's already fighting something. I also like to give him a second roller trait that allows him to have a five up feel no pain. So now you got an insane Blade Champion, which can only be hit on fours. If you want to pop the stratagem to make him only be wounded on fours, that's going to be even more fun to watch your opponent see. I spent so many attacks to try to beat this Blade Champion and only get two attacks through. If they do go through now, they have a five plus feel no pain to go through. You're going to have a super fun time and it's going to be tanky. And he's also a blender himself with no upgrades needed. I like shooting, you like shooting, orcs love shooting. What shooting does the Custodes have? The Custodes can take an Alaris Terminator Captain, give him the Gatekeeper Relic. Not to be confused with the one that you see in the Guard Codex. This is a much cooler Gatekeeper. The Relic Guardian Spear is Rapid Fire 2, uh, 24 inch, Strength 5, AP minus 2, 2 damage. These things auto also auto hit. So when you deep strike him in, get him within 12 inches, he's gonna be shooting four shots, auto hitting, Strength 5. Five is a magic number in this Codex, in this edition actually. Because most things are not going to be toughness 10. They're going to be toughness 9 and below. If you find something that's under strength uh, toughness 4, you're going to be winning on 3s. Anything that's under toughness 9 is going to be winning on 5s. You're basically never going to be winning on 6s at all. Even elite infantry and anything that's guardsman equivalent or chaff. With more, if you want more firepower, you can even take the Dreadhost. Dreadhost says that anything that is shot within 12 inches or he fights within half range, is going to get an additional pip of AP. You're going to have AP minus three, two damage shots that auto hit, strength five, winning basically everything on threes. You're going to mulch everything. So it's flamers on just on a, a super elite character, just elite anything you point at. Yep. Even if it's only four shots a turn without the martial guitar, that is still an amazing amount of shots. That's great against Marines. Oh, against Marines, it's going to be amazing. Against Tau battle suits specifically, strength, uh, toughness five they are with four wounds a piece. If two of these go through, you're gonna have one battle suit just drop dead. No more crisis spam on the custodies. And this is just one character. If you wanna do some cool teleporting shenanigans with the Terminator, take the Praetorian Plate Relic to do this cool effect. So you wanna take the Alaris uh, Praetor, give him the Vexil Imperatus and the Praetorian Plate Relic. The Praetorian Plate Relic allows this model once per battle to teleport into engagement range within three inches of an allied unit at least and anything that is around him is aura of six inches will get plus one attack. This only applies to core and character models. You can do this while there's an ongoing combat to keep your opponent surprised and off his toes. He's fighting a five man custodian squad. Now he has to deal with the Praetor there, giving those units an extra five attacks. One way you can use this relic is also to have the entire army march up to the middle of the board during the first early games of the turn, of uh, early turns of the game. So you can hold the middle, once you see your flanks, left or right, are being attacked and in trouble because your opponent obviously is going to avoid the big blob of custodians, have him teleport to the left and right flank and provide amazing support. Extra five attacks with custodians are nothing to laugh about, whether it be the Terminators, whether it be the Custodian Guard, or even better yet, the Virtus Praetors. So it sounds like you want to use this to just pick an area you want to win a fight in. Yes. You want to trick your opponent into thinking, my flanks are weak, my middle is strong, they decide to attack the flanks, and then all of a sudden you teleport your Terminator in there, and now your flanks are completely solidified. For my tactics, I prefer to take a five-man squad of Vertus Praetors, and also a captain with them with tip of the spear for 15 extra points. These bikes are very tanky with toughness six and four wounds. The unit itself of five Praetors are going to be going up the field, killing things with their uh, hurricane bolters, and charging and obliterating anything in melee combat. Five, I find, is a lucky number, simply because of the stratagem that I can pop when they're down to two models. As long as I pop one stratagem for Avenge the Fallen while they're under three models, units that are under half strength will get two attacks each. So that two-man squad of bikes that was used to be a five-man squad will be fighting at the strength of three bikes. Very cost-efficient. They're custodians. They shouldn't even be dying anyway. 
They have a four plus invulnerable save as well. As long as you're not fighting against Tau with the rail guns, <laughs> your bikes are gonna suffer, are gonna take maybe 700, 800 points worth of shooting and maybe lose one bike. I've seen so many games where a five man squad takes four or five last cannons, maybe a couple plasma rifles if I'm playing Tau, or even say a Bane Blade cannon and only lose one model. Thank you, thank you for the invuln saves of four plus on a toughness six chassis. And I can even spend a C two CP to give them a four plus to wound only. And those are your five tactical combinations for the Adeptus Custodes. Join us next time on Tactical Timeout. Remember to like and subscribe. From all of us at Northern Knights Gaming, we'll see you next time.